That was dead nuts. That was dead nuts too. Digging a hole back there. Hooray! Welcome back to Mud Lake Ranch. Today we're here with the ATI Moxie FXH45. This is a 1911 style handgun in 45 ACP. I saw this handgun at the NRA booth for ATI and I was um, drawn to this and a few other of their uh, firearms, including their uh, Crusader shotgun, because I was only really familiar with ATI for their AR-15 lowers that are affordable options that, that people tend to pick up to get started into the AR-15 uh, market. Um, but this 1911 style gun with its OD green uh, patented polymer frame, its stainless steel match grade barrel, and its parkerized steel slide had just, the, it just screamed that it wanted to be on the channel. Um, it has interchangeable parts with most 1911s, so your grips and other parts are interchangeable with 1911s. It is a very heavy gun, even without the magazines in it. Uh, it features a thumb safety uh, that's ambidextrous. It is on both sides. Um, there's no mention of it, but I don't believe it will fire unless you have this grip engaged to release this hammer. Um, so we'll check that out once we get it out to the range. This is my first experience with any 1911 style handgun. Um, so this is a true first impression of this firearm. Um, in the uh, description, it says that these are fiber optic sights, um, but to me, they appear to be paint. Um, they are white, so I don't see that they could be fiber optic. Typically fiber optic has a little bit more of a glow to it, but it's what it says on their website. Um, on the back side here, it has a a removable plate to mount optics plates. Now they do sell a full set that will run pretty much everything that is common on the market, including um, the loophole um, footprint, which I plan to put that one on here. Um, I believe it has RMR and um, other common sight plates in that little package that they uh, sent to me after the gun came in. Um, so once we do a review on the optic, we will use it on this firearm and it will be included in that optic review for, I believe it's the loophole. Covered the safeties, we covered the stainless steel match grade barrel. It has a pick rail here on the bottom in the front um, that you can use to mount a light if you so choose. In the front of this grip, it has got some really super deep ergonomic cuts for your hand grip. It feels great in the hand, it's well balanced. And this, this grip safety, is actually fairly comfortable here. Uh, the takedown on the 1911 should be similar to other 1911s. I will eventually get around to do a cleaning video on this, but I haven't fired it yet, which we're gonna get to in just a moment. It comes with one eight plus one magazine. And um, of course, 45 ACP is your rounds. Today we'll be shooting 45 ACP from American Ordnance. They sent that to the channel for use and review. Um, I am an affiliate of American Ordnance, so visit mudlakeranch.com slash deals. And there will be a link to American Ordnance. And if you use my link, I'm not sure if I have a coupon code or not, but you'll see when you get there. I will earn commission from purchases made from that link. And a little disclaimer for YouTube, I do not sell firearms or ammunition. The 4140 Parkerized Steel uh, slide here has serrations only at the rear, um, nothing up front. And uh, the grip texturing is uh, similar to other 1911s that I've seen with its, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's like a diamond checkering. Feels all right in the hand. The grips, which I mentioned, are interchangeable. Other 1911s are fairly normal or typical of a 1911, in my opinion. They are a plastic material and this diamond checkered grid um, grip. It provides ample texturing and grip. I'm really digging these finger grooves in the front. They really do fit the hand well. The uh, trigger is adjustable. It appears that there is an Allen key through the bottom of the front hole on this trigger to make adjustments doesn't mention what the poundage is out of the box or what the adjustment range is out of the box on the website. So I'm not able to speak to that, but we do have a uh, trigger gauge here from Wheeler Engineering. Uh, Wheeler makes many tools that are great for gunsmithing. They did send that to the channel for use in these videos. So thank you to Wheeler. Also a link to Wheeler on mudlakeranch.com and I do earn 
commission off purchases from Wheeler. With all new firearms, I recommend that you clean the gun before operating it to make sure there's nothing obstructing the barrel and that you've lubricated everything in the moving parts so you don't get a friction that's unnecessary and your gun will run smoother and operate better out of the box. Um, sometimes that will aid your break-in period. Uh, run something like a rip cord through the bore at a bare minimum if you're not going to clean it um, and add some CLP to your uh, friction points if you're not gonna take the time to clean it. Up in front here, I just noticed it does have the uh, trigger guard with the texturing for people that like to ride the front of the trigger guard when they shoot. Um, not a preferred grip, but it is an option for those of you that have maybe just mammoth hands that don't like um, wrapping around your own fingers. Um, but some people really like riding up front on there. It is not a threaded barrel. I don't know if they offer a threaded barrel option, but we are going to fire this gun now. We'll see how it does in accuracy. And then we'll give you our final thoughts on this. We rate our firearms on coolness factor, practicality, accuracy, and not in that order. All right, let's put some rounds down range. Safety's off, one's in the chamber. I don't have my glasses on. That went forward a little slow. I don't like that. It did not cycle. Okay, it did cycle, but it wouldn't let me pull the trigger. All right, so we got two live rounds on the ground right now. Safety's on. We had two not go off, but that is the first, that was the first mag. Um, I'm not impressed with my shots, that's for sure. But not gonna win any trophies for those shots. All right, these are those two. All right, see if we can replicate that. Mag's all the way in. Um, I've had the, the bullet not want to go in there a couple times now. Um, I'm going to switch mags and see if that corrects the issue. All right, we're going to try a second mag now. Um, they are different. I'm not sure, I should have paid attention, but one of them is very shiny, one of them is flat, and one of them says Megar Italy, and the other one has no name on it. I'm sort of guessing this one came with the gun, and this was the second one they sent. This one's definitely a higher quality magazine. Mag's in. I don't think, I don't think it's in battery again. Now it's in battery. That was dead nuts. That was dead nuts too. Digging a hole back there. Uh oh. That one didn't feed um, right close to the end of the magazine again. That one's in. Definitely need to clean this up. It's got some... Uh, metal shavings and stuff inside the all right so I'll give this thing a quick bath all right we're gonna assume that this is gonna fire again 
uh, safety off. The target on the right is the um, Infinite Defense Infinity Targets. And I've been using the same one for all of my videos all this year. And it's held up great. Going center mass. Uh, we had another um, failure to um, completely go into battery on the second to last round again. That was the last round. Going to switch mags. Well, apparently I'm good at the first shot and that's it. Well, the wind picked up, so... Uh, when I dropped the slide that time, it did not pull all the way into the chamber again. Uh, so we're going to push that. I pushed it forward. It is in battery now. Um, that was weird. That time I shot and it locked open like an empty magazine. But it wasn't, it was a second shot. That time, it didn't go into battery. That time it didn't go into battery. That time it didn't go in the battery. All right, so I have one, two, three on the ground, live rounds in the ground, one in my pocket. I'm gonna turn you around to watch me again. So those shots weren't bad. The first one was outstanding, getting the hang of how this thing shoots. Pierce still went all the way forward that time. That one felt funky, like I had an extra rattle that shouldn't have been there. I'm gonna go overhead. It doesn't appear to be fully in. Um, there's a little. So we're gonna try that again. It's having a lot of trouble with the final two, I've noticed. Maybe the spring's not quite enough because it's not broken. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> proved myself wrong. This is getting better, it's getting better. That's the fourth mag. We got two boxes, so we I have more than that. I got more at home, but we'll see if, how it gets running with two boxes. Then we'll go from there. This is not as much fun as I wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, some guns require a break in. This might be one of them. Beep. Well, I can tell I'm moving the front of the gun though.
Hey, we emptied a we emptied one for once. All right, I got another mag right in my pocket here. It's in all the way. Appears to be in battery that time. All right, that one's interesting. It did a last round bolt hoban, but there's still that was what that was the ten. It was the eighth of eight rounds. There's still seven in there, and it didn't pick that one up. And it is in the mag properly. It's all the way to the back. It's seated properly. Um, it's and it's not. It's not the bolt catch that's catching it. Uh, it stayed back on. Oh, I got a double feed. That's my own fault. Whew, spicy. Did not load all the way again. Okay, how many we get on the ground this time? One, two, three. Might as well pick some brass up while I'm down here. Okay, we just had three malfunctions on those two magazines. I think uh, maybe, well, maybe there was more on the first one. Three on this mag. And I got one more. So we had like four malfunctions on those two mags. I'm gonna spare you the next couple mags, although it would be kind of cool to get an actual eight round mag dump done. Something about it. I don't believe it's these rounds. So I'm going to give them both another shot. Hmm. Well, that one didn't want, that didn't work. So, uh, why aren't you showing us the targets, Jared? Are you a bad shot? No, the gun's not running, so what's the point? <laughs> anyway, um, we are on second box of 45. Um, we have not yet had one mag complete. Some guns require a break-in, but not according to John Patton, the gun collective, every gun should run out of the box. So I second that but I also really want this to run because this gun is staying at the channel. So uh, thank you to ATI for sending the Moxie for review. And um, I look forward to breaking this in until it works. Although it's 45, it's a little more abusive than nine. So that one hit me right in the forehead. That's it! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! A full mag! Can you believe it? We got a full mag through it. One box of shells. That's the first mag out of the second box. I'm joyous. You should be too. All right, let's rip another mag through this thing. And hopefully we can keep this streak up. And if a gun breaks in at under 100 rounds, that's impressive. I'm also wondering if uh, racking the slide versus dropping the slide will make a difference. So this time, I'm gonna drop the slide. Yep, that made a difference, all right. 
Oh, I got a little, uh, little stick a rooney in there. It doesn't want to come out. I got to go tap on this a little bit. All right, boys and girls. Um, I went and loaded the other mag while I was... To, all I had to do was tip the bottom of that bullet up and it fell right out. It wasn't like jammed in there in any way. Um, I'm confident that this mag, the uh, better of the two, this shiny metal, the other one's like parkerized or something. It's a little sticky. And I actually think that's what the metal shavings are in there. It's just from the um, brass feeding up through and grinding against the rougher metal mag. So that might need some Otis dry lube on it but I'm running much better. And I'm really eating up that target. You're gonna have to take my word for it. I'll turn it around this time and then I'll take all headshots just to entertain you. Oh, and the other thing you guys need to, to consider, um, if you've owned a gun, if you bought a gun and you are relying on that for personal protection and you don't shoot it much, or if you bought one and it sits in your nightstand, and you've never shot it and you're thinking that that is your personal protection piece you got to get out to the range and you have to shoot to make sure the guns function properly all right we're gonna put this thing right on uh, let's see here ah! all right i'm gonna sh yeah, maybe i'll get you a little closer i'm gonna shoot at that because it hasn't been hit if you look down here I've almost gutted this feller. Couple flyers, but that was probably when I shot at his head. Or maybe I shot at that target. We're gonna go with that because there's no way I missed aiming here up here. So we're gonna shoot for that. Uh, I'm gonna go from about 15 combat zone. Two, three, four, five. 11, 12, 13. Wait, paces or feet? I can't remember. Well, we're at 15 yards ah uh, we are all so close to having another full mag through this oh it was the last round that got not fully in. Ah, doesn't want to pull back again. Jeez. When it sticks on that last round, it really sticks. I'm going to give that last round another shot. All right, I have visitors. Probably should have moved that bicycle. It's back there. <laughs> Somebody's mountain bike's gonna have a thousand holes in it. Ah, it jammed on the first shot again. I'm blaming the mag. Because that's that second, uh, the crunchier mag. Hey, we emptied it. Couple more mags and we are out of ammo. This dude lived. There's the uh, shot that Trump took off the side of the ear. Incredible. Um, these ones, not so much, but he might've made it. I don't know. All right, so we established, we got maybe, I think three tops left magazines. Um, and then we're gonna close this thing up. Getting more familiar with the gun at least. Uh-huh. That was the last two again on the, uh, ooh, that was the last two again on the rougher magazine. And we had three malfunctions on 
the rougher texture of the two magazines. God, I hate when they hit me in the head. And we had last round, I think. Yeah, last round again. Here, we'll lock this thing open. You know, yeah, let's, let's not do that. Hey, we got it to come out anyway. Last mag, stick around please for the end. You're gonna enjoy it. Ah, I wanted so bad to mag dump that. Son of a diddly. It's, hi -ah! Who needs snap caps? I got. <laughs> mm. Fuck. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. This is the good mag. That was the last one, so it's got an excuse. I do have a pile of them laying on the ground. So, all right, last mag, and this is the next mag. All right, I got two mags, <laughs> all right. And this is the better mag. That was the, the one that's been giving me all the trouble. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Maybe it likes seven. I don't know. Jeez. When it hangs up, it's really hard, really hard to get the ejection. I'm getting a blister from shooting. This is how much I've shot it in between my web and my hand. Okay. Clear. The one thing we didn't get to in the uh, intro part was the uh, check in the trigger pull. So let's get the uh, Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge out. See what this thing rings in at. This is the first time I've used this, so let's give it a whirl. All right, well, you saw that it's clear. I feel like I gotta pull it with the wrong hand though. Four pounds, 8.3 ounces. Three pounds, 10.5 ounces. Four pounds, 6.7 ounces. Four pounds, 6.7 ounces. Three pounds, 1.7 ounces. Three pounds, 9.7 ounces. Three pounds, 3.3 ounces. So we're under four pounds on most of them, um, but it it's reading inconsistently, but I also experienced inconsistent see with the gun to begin with. So 
All right, the uh, Moxie FXH45 is gonna take some time to break in apparently. Um, we've spent two boxes, that's not a lot, that's not a lot, but I'll tell you what, I do have a blister here from firing this gun. Um, and I, I'm not a soft-handed person, I've been doing firewood for two hours, three hours before I came out here. Um, so this isn't, uh, manual labor's not new to me, and this thing's chewing up the inside of my hand here. Appearance wise, let's, let's do the grades. Um, accuracy. It's fairly accurate given the shooter, given the amount of time I've had with it. Um, you saw the one headshot I hit perfectly first shot, second, third, fourth, all the rest of them, not so much, but I think it was either rushing the shots or um, anticipating the recoil because 45 is just not as soft as nine. Um, <clears throat> Practicality, um, it's not, this is not really a practical gun for self-defense. It's a little bit big for concealed carry. Um, I think it's a little bit smaller than 1911s in general. It's um, in the affordable range. I don't remember the exact retail, but you can look that up yourself. It's definitely four to 500 bucks. It's not something out of this world um, as far as price goes. And if you want a 45, this single stack 45 is a New York compliant gun, probably California. I'm not sure about California, but because they have like registration or some crap. But being an eight plus one, you're a little limited on capacity, but you're slinging 45. So 45 is a huge handgun round. Um, one of the larger semi-automatic handgun rounds that you can get so you can punch bigger holes. Uh, I do like that it has optics mounts ready. The sights are actually really nice. Um, I showed you those earlier and it is easy to pick up the target. I love the kind of goal post thing they got going back here versus the typical two dots that you see on most guns. This uh, safety on the, on the rear of the grip, I don't really care for. I do like it has the pick rail. So practicality, um, knocking off a bunch of points for it not functioning properly out of the box. But I think that'll work itself out over time. And uh, it's gonna be here for a while, so you get to see it again on the channel. We do some ammo tests, anything that comes in 45. Currently, this is the only 45 I have outside of a high point. So if we're doing ballistic gel tests, which should be coming up soon, this would be your candidate. Um, and we'll also be doing the optic mount. So maybe we'll get some shooting with the op mounting the loophole optic on here. Uh, trigger adjustment, I didn't tinker with that. That's nice that it has it. That does make it a little bit more practical. Um, works, I guess, and it's not super heavy. I do, I do like that you can adjust it though. Match grade stainless steel barrel, that's fantastic. And um, it's practicality, I'm gonna give it like a six, 5.5, because it's more of a, for me, it was just kind of something cool to own. I just love the grip. I love the OD green. It's gonna look great on the gun wall gonna look great in the safe it's, it's gonna look cool at the range just make sure you've broke it in before you start you know handing it to somebody and letting them know that it uh, you know might malfunction on them it is the first 1911 style gun i own so it's yeah, still practicality it's just not practical in the scheme of how many firearms are available in semi-automatic pistols uh, accuracy i thought it was good but not great and blame shooter I'm going to say accuracy over time is going to get better and it's going to be, I'm going to give it a 7.5 right now. Um, with optics might be better, with time it will definitely be better for me. I'm not sure what your experience is with it. And coolness factor, that's what I wanted it for, was the coolness factor. I'm going to, it, with the optic it's going to look sick, I imagine. If I throw a light in here it's going to make it look a little bit better. Um, 1911s just look cool. The name Moxie in this graphic, I actually don't like. Um, it's kind of cheesy in my opinion but i do love this grip texture and i even though this trigger trigger is kind of funky i do like that the way it looks with those three holes and this, this stainless appearance aluminum brushed aluminum appearance that's pretty neat um but yeah this is a gun that i'd like to show off so hopefully we can get this thing running really well coolness factors whew, there's so many cool guns uh seven i gotta stay a little bit low 6.9 um but anyway thank you for watching this episode of mud lake ranch on the ati moxie fxh 45 
If you found this video useful, helpful, or interesting, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Remember to visit mudlakeranch.com slash deals. Click on any of those links and I will earn commission for your purchases that are attributed to those link clicks. Again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Jared. Expect to see a lot more handgun reviews coming up very soon.